And here we are for our daily JavaScript lesson. Um, today, I'd like to continue with the shopping cart, and I'd like to, you know, pick up a couple features that we put in but didn't finish. Um, so right now, I have this clear cart button, and I want to activate this because, you know, as we test, it'll really be helpful if we can clear the cart and then add new items to the cart and see what happens and then clear it and add items to the cart, right? So let's do that first. So first of all, I'm going to find the HTML element for the clear cart button, which is this button tag right here with the ID name clear cart. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go down here to my script tag and maybe I'll put it right below the add to cart and then above the display cart function. So it's got to go right between these two right here. And I'll use jQuery and I'll select clear cart and since it's an ID I'll put the hash mark in front and then I'll we'll, we'll add a click action to this element okay and then so you know so I'll type click and parentheses and then we'll do function parentheses and curly brackets and then we'll put the event object or the event parameter here and there we go Okay, so if you recall, earlier we uh, we created a a clear cart function. So I'll just I'll type in clear cart with the parentheses, and then we'll just call on that clear cart function that we have, and it's below here, right? And that'll clear the cart. You know, essentially it just you know sets the the array to empty, right? So that removes all the items in in the cart. So the next thing I'm going to do is anytime we, you know, update the cart or change the contents of the cart, what we need to do is we need to call display cart. Okay, so we'll call on the display cart method, and then that'll make the cart update and, you know, show what's in it, right? So if we change the, the contents, then we want to update that and show the new contents, right? So let's give that a test. I'll save it here and uh, go to the browser and refresh. And then when I click the cart, the clear cart button, you know, the cart is empty. So that's working pretty good. Let's add some items. So I'll add a couple shoes and then uh, put a couple more things in there. And then here's our cart. And then I'll clear it. Right. There we go. So next, let's talk about, um, about these numbers. Okay. So what's the problem with this number? Like why when I add, you know, a couple frisbees, there's no, oh wait, there's no problem until we add a fifth one, right? So if I add one, two, three, four, and now this should add up to, what would it be, 25, I don't know, 26, 10, something like that. Um, but instead of 26, 10, it gives me 26, 0, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, right? So what's going on here? Well, this isn't so much a problem with JavaScript as it is a problem with, um, computers and how they deal with numbers. And I, I don't have the PhD required to really explain it thoroughly. Um, and you probably don't even want to hear the explanation. Anyway, let's just cut it short and say that, you know, the numbers here are converted into binary values, right? You remember with computers, everything's in ones and zeros, right? And so essentially that's kind of a, a, a totally different number system than what we're seeing here, okay? And there's a limit to the number of digits, Okay, so um, so what happens is, you know, you know, sometimes the computer's going to add up a number and realize that the binary equivalent isn't exactly what the regular, you know, numeral equivalent would be. And so it just gives us the closest, it, you know, item it can, right? Um, <clears throat> you could think about it as, you know, converting, you know, something in English into Chinese and then converting it into, you know, um, I don't know, into Arabic and then converting it back to Japanese before converting it into French and then sending it back to, to English again, you know. Um, you know, obviously something's going to be lost in translation. Um, <clears throat> so anyway, so that, that's our problem here. So how, how do we deal with this, right? I mean, essentially this should have been 2610. So if we round it up and then round it off to two digits, we would get the right number. And you know what? JavaScript has a function to help us with that called to fixed okay so let's let's give that a try so right here this value right like this value right here 
is being generated by a function in our shopping cart called total cart. Okay? Let's see here. Yeah, total cart. Here it is. So in this, um, you know, we generate the total cost of the cart, and then we, we return that value. Okay, so when we're dealing with JavaScript and its funny business with numbers, what we're going to do is we're always going to store the numeric value, okay? And then whenever we want to display a value, then we'll convert it into whatever display value we want to see. So in our case, I want to see, you know, a, a decimal number with two decimal places that's rounded to the correct value, to the nearest whole number, or the nearest, you know, second digit, right? Hundredth place. Okay, so we won't convert numbers when we save them or internally. We'll always just leave them as regular JavaScript number values. And we'll only convert them into, you know, fixed decimal places when we need to display them for a user to see them. Okay, and we'll do it this way. So, you know, uh, you may not realize it, but a number actually is an object also. So you can type the dot after a number. So total cost is a variable, but it contains a number. Right, so here I've, I've got total cost. It started out as a zero, and then I'm adding some values to it as I loop through every item in my cart, and the value is the price times the count plus the last price times the count until we get all the items in the cart. So this is a number, and if I put the dot here, I can do uh, dot two fixed, okay? <clears throat> and the two fixed function is going to return a string Okay, so it's going to convert our number to a string, and then it's going to round it off to a fixed number of decimal places. And you can put a digit here to say how many decimal places. So what I want is I want this equivalent here, you know, $1.22 or $1.99 or whatever the value is. So essentially I want two decimal places. So what I'll do is I'll say, you know, number dot two fixed, and then I'll put two in as the number of decimal places. Let's give it a try. So I'll refresh it here, and there's 2610. Let's add another value, right? So that's looking pretty good, right? No funny business with the numbers, okay? Let's try another one. So the next thing I want to do is when I display, you know, something here for the shopping cart, what I'd like to do is I'd like to say, you know, how many of the item you have times price per item equals, and then the total value for that item. So this is the total for all the items in the cart, but I want to see what the total is for each, you know, purchase or each item, right? So what I'm going to do is I'll go into my, my code here, and let's find the function called list cart. And this is not exactly the same data that's in the cart, right? It's, it's similar, but it's a little bit different. And what I want to do is I want to add another property. So, you know, here's what we've got. We've got list cart, and we're creating a, a, an array that's a copy, that's going to be a copy of our cart array. And then we're going to loop through every item in the cart. And when we do, we're going to get the current item in the cart. So that's the real item that our shopping cart is keeping track of. And then we're going to make an item copy. And this is what we're going to pass back to other functions, right? And then what we did here is we used a loop to loop through all the properties, right? And really, this just gets the three properties, name, price, and count, right? This is just a kind of a quick way to get to them. And what I want to do is I'm actually going to add an extra property, okay? And what I want to do is I want to type in item copy dot total. So I want to give the copy item that we're going to pass out of this function a new property called total. So now these objects will have name, price, count, and total, right? And the total is going to be item.price times item.count. Okay, so now, you know, here we're going to make items, well, item copies anyway, that will have all the properties of the original item, name, price, and count, and an extra property called total that will be the total of the name and the price, or the price and the count. Okay, sorry. And, uh, and then we'll add that to the cart here and then return the copy, okay? The copy of the cart. 
So how can we use that? Well, let's scroll up to the top here. And where we display the cart is this function display cart. Okay. And then, you know, it's got a list item followed by the name of the item in the cart, followed by the cart array with the count. I'm going to put a line return here and here like this, right? So I got a list item. It's going to display cart.name, a space, and then it's going to say cart.count. And then let's put a space and maybe an X for times. And then I'm going to put two quotation marks and two plus signs. And what I want to do is I want to put the price here. Okay, so we'll say uh, cart array item i dot price. Okay, and then um, maybe over here I want to say uh, let's actually put another line return there. And we'll say equals, and then we'll do again two quotes, two plus signs, cart array bracket i dot total right and there's where our total is gonna gonna come back to us right okay um maybe let's rearrange this what if i did it like this how about like that and that kind of reads pretty good because we have a couple spaces in front and then we can kind of see count price and total or name count price total so let's save that and we'll give it a try here Okay, oh, that looks pretty good. So we got seven Frisbees at, uh, at 522, which is 3654, and uh, two at whatever, right? And now we're going to have that problem again. Let me see if I can make that problem happen here. Oh, wait, there it is, right? Okay. Let's do it again. Oh, there we go, right? So you can see sometimes the value here for the total is going to have that floating point weirdness, right? So, so let's go back into our code, and we'll go back down to list cart, right? And right here, we're getting the total for the cart, right, from the item dot price times item dot count. And what I want to do is I want to convert this into a, a two fixed, right? A, a string with a fixed number of decimal places. So I think we can put this in parentheses like this and then dot, do a dot two fixed. Okay. So, you know, and I'm putting it in parentheses because I want to do the, the multiplication first. If I just put dot two fixed on the end of one of these, it would just apply to one of these items, not the, the to, you know, the multiply the you know the product of both right okay so we got two fixed and then we'll do two decimal places okay so there's another use for two fixed there right so again we're just using this just on the output so you know this is this is not contained in the cart it's really just the list that the cart passes on for other functions to display okay so uh, so we'll save that and then uh, we'll refresh here and now this is 99.18, right? And now we don't have any weird numbers there, right? And then we can clear our cart and uh, do a couple numbers there, and we're not getting any weird, strange values, right? And everything's looking pretty good. Okay, so so anyway, so hopefully that was had some useful information in it, and uh, you know, good luck, good luck with this to everybody. I hope you guys are going on and kind of you know, trying out your own ideas here. And uh, I'll continue with this and we'll format this too. I want to do a section maybe where we just style this and, you know, do things with how this is going to look. And maybe we'll we'll set it up where you can delete single items or set the number of items, you know, in in um, in the cart for each, each listing here, right? So anyway, thanks for watching and I hope that was helpful.